Um, <laughs> this has been exciting. So Dave is a professor uh, of computer science at the University of San Francisco. And he and I have been working for a long time. Um, and it's been absolutely awesome on every level. So welcome, Dave. Thank you, Tara. Yeah, no, I, I've been at USF uh, teaching for a long time and, and kind of, you know, they do a good job and we do a good job in CS education. But it's not exactly right, especially for beginners. You know, so my kind of focus for the last 10 or 15 years has been trying to change that. And, and the problem is, you know, we get a lot of students that come in and we teach them these languages that are textual in nature. They're really hard to learn at first. You start typing stuff in and the computer barks at you and says you're doing something wrong. Um, and you also don't get to build cool stuff. Right. So. So anyway, I got involved with these languages, App Inventor and now Thunkable, which really kind of make things better, better for for beginners. Um, and part of it is, you know, I we get I get students coming in and and I, you know maybe you can call them like puzzle doers, and those puzzle doers do fine no matter how you teach computer science, right? They're gonna you give them some problem, they're gonna go solve it. And they're not even necessarily caring about, say, the big picture. OK, but I think what we need to focus on more is the big problem, uh, you know, big picture thinkers and allow them to use technology and use coding to do great things. So so my focus is getting artists, climate experts, um, you know, everybody, whatever their domain is, allow them to be able to 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 code. OK, and it doesn't have to be as hard as we make it. And, and that's why I think like Thunkable, and we're gonna talk about Thunkable today, is a great language for either building apps or prototyping apps, right? And one thing I love about Tara and Technovation is, you know, it's a combination of kind of entrepreneurship, thinking of how to change the world, how to make the world better, and tech. And unfortunately, in, in computer science departments, we, you know, we try to do that, but a lot of times the motivational aspects, the big picture aspects get lost. Um, so I think Technovation's a, a, a great program. So I'm just gonna share my screen and Tara and I are just gonna talk about, um, you know, some of the, the, the things you can build with, with Technovation. Okay, cool. So here's a, a site called Drag and Drop Code. This is a site I'm just now developing, um, but it's got some pretty good stuff up on there. And then one thing it has, is a link to a book. I think this is one of the first books on the Thunkable language. And you can click that link and get to, you know, it's a book with about 12 chapters and about 20, 25 apps that you can build using, using those chapters. And you can link here. There's also video lessons that go, that go with the book, um, or you can just use the video lessons, right? Um, so kind of, you know, the way, the way you start out is just learning the fundamentals. And, and this first, uh, you know, this first app over here says Barcelona. It's basically a travel app. And you can, you know, if, you, if you're traveling, you can go there. And the idea is you have a bunch of buttons that when you click them, and let me just click on the app and this will bring up a preview from, from Thunkable page. Uh, you know, but if you click on these buttons, it just tells you in Spanish how to say those words. So you might think of all these important things you want, put them in this app. And and use it use it for travel, right? Um, you know, pretty cool. And and but the nice thing is, you know, students can build this, or you can build this like on your first day of learning to code, which is not the normal kind of coding. You know, the the, the way you can learn. So just real quickly, I'll just show uh, the blocks for this. Uh, but essentially, you've got a button, right? And and this is the Thunkable Designer. You just drag images in, drag buttons, drag components in. Um, and then you can also have, there's this, uh, you know, text to speech component you can drag in. So that knows how to say things. I've also got a little translator component. Okay. Um, but so this is the visual part of the app. And then in the blocks, you know, it's a pretty simple app, but you know, you basically say when you click on the button, translate the text on the button and then speak it out with the text-to-speech, okay? 
And you know, we you know we we start in this chapter by just just speaking out some words, um, but then you progress to where you're translating and speaking it. But it's literally a first day kind of thing. And so in in that chapter one, you can you can learn how to how, how to do that in five minutes. Yeah, yeah, in five minutes. You, you know, I, I like to brag in my classes, in my university classes, um, you know, students come in and before I even do the syllabus, you know, they build their first app, which is which is pretty incredible given, you know, that's not the norm. <laughs> okay, so I think it's kind of cool. Um, sorry, let me go back to uh, my drag and drop code. Okay, so the first chapter is kind of event handling, right? And, and the simplest event is I click on a button and the text-to-speech says something, okay? And then we also had a little translation in that. Um, the second chapter kind of lets you do these kind of soundboard apps. And so I'll just click on, on this guy. And this is kind of a, I called I Have a Dream 2020, but this is, you know, a civil rights kind of history app, right? But you could think of it, you know, to do all kinds of stuff, right? And really the goal of this chapter is you learn how to bring in um, media, how to bring in sound clips, how to bring in images. Um, I have my students go to archive.org quite a bit because you can get a lot of sound clips there that are usable and wonderful. Um, but essentially you can just click on a, one of these buttons. Can I, uh, oh, sorry, Dave. Glad to be here at the can, can they hear that? Could you hear that speech, Tar? Yeah, a little bit. Um, what I was going to say was that I think uh, when Madhuri was saying um, like emotions are a big part of behavior change, I think um, sound and beautiful imagery uh, uh, evokes emotion. And I was thinking like the tree.fm website is that, right? Like beautiful pictures of trees and the sound of the forest. Um, all the meditation apps are just basically a picture and a sound. Yeah, sound yeah. File, right, so. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the key, you know, one great thing with Thunkable is is artists who already know how to create, you know, say web pages and graphics and images um, or make sounds or musicians, right? But with, with Thunkable, it's real easy to kind of turn that into an interactive app. So like, for instance, here's another soundboard with some of the Tree FM stuff. And, you know, Tara's right. I mean, it's just beautiful, calming, you know, sounds, right? Um, so just, anyway, part of the idea here is let designers and artists, um, you know, turn their, their beautiful stuff into um, interactive, interactive apps. Okay, so anyway, chapter two kind of gets you, you know, into media. Um, and then chapter three, you learn kind of the fundamentals of artificial intelligence, you know, and, and really what that is, is how does your app ask questions? And I'll just go to the blocks, you know, is you, is you learn to deal with these if blocks, okay? And, and you can essentially ask any question. Here, you know, we ask, oh, did the text on my label get down to zero? And if it did, we want to stop things and say time, time is up, okay? Um, now, you can, like I said, you can make these questions, you know, as complex as you want, right? So we could have multiple branches where we ask really complex things. And that's really, you know, that's what artificial intelligence is. And that's what, you know, that's why the apps can think and, and, and do things. Dave, this is a very interesting question. It's like, what if the speech recognition in Thunkable does not support my language? Is there an extension for Khmer language? Okay, good. Yeah, I don't know about that particular language. You know, they the text to speech component is does have a bunch of languages in it. So, um, you know, I I don't know if you click on here, you can see. Oh, it says which, yes. I think. Which one? Available pronunciation languages. It says Khmer is yes. I think. That's with the text to speech, and and that just kind of changes the pronunciation. Oh, I see. Yeah, and then with the translation, um, I believe it probably has the same same list of, of languages. So yeah. the translator and the and the text to speech default language, it's a little confusing. The default language is for pronunciation, and the other one actually translates translates words. Many years ago, there was a group of Cambodian girls that uh, wanted to that made a poetry app. I wonder if we can have like with a very simple if and say this kind of make your own translator app. 
Yeah, I, I like that. Yeah, kind of like that first app I showed where you just have a few terms um, and it speaks them out. But instead, yeah, you could you could have some terms that, um, you know, that get translated kind of manually. Right. As you know, as opposed to using a, a translator, you could just use if else to to do that. That's a really, really good idea. OK, so chapter four. Uh, you, you know, essentially is an information app or a quiz app, a slideshow, you know, any kind of app where you're kind of walking through information. If you want to show a bunch of information where the user slides through or make it into a quiz, um, this is the, the, the kind of app. So with this kind of app, um, you know, I do have this list viewer that shows some data. Um, but the, the really kind of interesting part is in the blocks and sorry, this gets a little complicated, but you'll notice I've got these variables and think of variables as like hidden memory. Um, so it's, you know, obviously when you run an app, you don't see all the information all at once. And in this case, I've got an article list. I've got the questions I'm going to ask. I've got the answers and I've even got my multiple choice questions, right? Um, so I define all those with these things called variables. And I'm going to show you in a second, you can also define stuff like this in a spreadsheet and then connect your app to the spreadsheet. Okay, there's a couple different ways of, of doing it. If we scroll down to the blocks, you know, kind of the, the key blocks here is, you know, when I click this next button, you know, what, what happens? You know, an index is a variable that keeps track of where you are. So in this quiz, it keeps track of if I'm on the first, the second, or the third. And the basic idea is when they click the next button, I add one to my index, make sure I'm not at the end, and then I show all this stuff. And kind of one of the concepts that you know students don't get right away is for a quiz, you think, oh, there's gonna be like 10 screens in my app. In this case, we got one screen, the format's the same, right? It always shows, you know, this particular or you know, some kind of information. And then we just change the image and change the text that, that shows up there. Um, there's, um, there's a very, very good question. It says, good. what should we do when our coding is appropriate, but the results don't show? As <laughs> <laughs> well, here's my answer to that. And, and I'm teaching a beginning class at, at the university level. And I, I say this probably four times a day. Um, you have to be so, so patient in coding. You know, probably the number one skill you can learn. Most of the time, you're going to try something. It's not going to work. And then you just debug it and you work it and you try to fix it. And then finally it works. And that's like the greatest, you know, <laughs> that's the most fun thing you do in, 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 in coding. Um, but you have to get very used to, you know, always having something wrong. And you, you finally fix it, and then you go on to the next thing, and then it's wrong. And at the same time, you're learning all this hard stuff, at least if you're doing a beginning coding class, you're learning hard stuff, you finally you know, solve it, you finally master it, and then you get a new problem, okay? And that's just, that's how it works. Okay, so I do wanna show a, a spreadsheet app, you know, because a, a lot of what people wanna do in technovation or, or app building is you've got some data, you want to show it, and then you want you know to let the user kind of navigate through that information. But you want to grab your information from a spreadsheet. And you could use this for any organization or club you're in or even your class at school. You could quickly build like a Meet My Classmates app. All this information is coming from a, a spreadsheet, okay? And, and so my app, will work on whatever data is in that spreadsheet. And essentially you can just kind of click on one of the people, the information and, and more information comes up, right? So you could have a spreadsheet with 20 columns and then that second screen would just show the detailed information. Um, so I just wanna just show you a couple things. You know, you've got some spreadsheet. So for instance, you know, if I had this spreadsheet called recycling issues, and, you know, maybe, you know, this is just people at your school who's, you know, they, there's some issue they've found and then you've got a description and a location. I could quickly build an app which kind of connects, connects um, this data to, to my Thunkable app. 
Okay. And in fact, this thing is the one that shows all the, the, the rows of the spreadsheet. Basically I'm connected to this class roster. Okay. Which is some spreadsheet. And essentially what you do is you just choose the spreadsheet that you've already created. And then you come down here and there's these data bindings and you can just basically choose one of your column headers and match it to this picture. Okay. And then choose a different column header. And that's, what's going to show up, you know, in the, in the title or whatnot. Okay. And then on the info screen, there are blocks, which let you say, you know, you know what, take my spreadsheet and grab the name column and I'll give you, you know, one of the rows and grab that information from the spreadsheet. So there's these very simple blocks that let you go extract information from the spreadsheet and show it in, in, your, in your app. Uh, there's a question, Dave, how can you run a search feature in your spreadsheet data instead of only showing the next record, which is a very good Yeah, question. that's a great, great question. Yeah. So um, Thunkable does not have a block to do the search. So you, you kind of have to do it manually. Um, you can do it though. So, so what you do is you bring in the whole list into a variable. Okay. And then when you have that variable, you have to do a loop and we haven't talked about loops, but you can kind of loop through a list of information. And then you have an if question that says, you know, if this thing is whatever I'm searching for, then I've, I've found it. Um, so that's the only way you can do it now. All right. Thank you, everyone, for staying with us for the awesome questions. Dave, thank you for teaching us, um, giving us superpowers to build anything we want and to change the <laughs> yeah. world, right? Because no, my pleasure. Yeah, thanks for having me, Tar. That's what education is. I mean, that's the only way we're going to make our world better. So thank you, everyone. And um, and I highly recommend you to rewatch some of the data that was shared because this is recorded and it's going to give you lots and lots of ideas. And um, this season for Technovation, we have a special prize for climate. Um, and uh, those who are rebuilding back things stronger after COVID. So I can't wait to see what you build. Um, thank you, everyone. And have a happy Valentine's weekend. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>